Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making a hearty, delicious pasta fajol. So let's get started. First of all, we have some prep work to do, starting with one large celery stalk. Give it a chop. I have three large carrots that are peeled. I'm gonna give them a chop as well. We wanna have similar sized pieces. The pea size is really up to you. I wouldn't go too small because then your carrot will become liquefied. So I think half moons is the way to go. As the carrots get larger, they become quarter moons. Everything should fit on a spoon. I'm also chopping one medium onion, and if you wanted a time saver, you could totally just get mirepoix at the grocery store. They have it almost at every single store. Mirepoix is a mixture of chopped carrots, celery, and onion, and it's a great soup starter. Give it a chop down the middle, and now nice little diced pieces follow. So easy. Into my Dutch oven, I'm adding three tablespoons of olive oil-ish. We're gonna place this over medium-high heat and let it warm up. Once your oil is nice and warm, we're gonna add the onion in and cook until it is starting to brown. Grab a wooden spoon, give it a stir. One carrot, just one piece, that's all we have. We're gonna cook the onions, stirring frequently. It's about 10 minutes, but it totally depends on your cooktop. The sugar in the onion will caramelize and really give you tons of flavor. This is the base of your soup, so don't skip this step. We're not sweating the onions out. You wanna get some color in them. My onions have started to brown nicely, thanks to some patient stirring. So we're gonna add our celery as well as the carrots and garlic. Give that a stir, and now we're gonna add six garlic cloves, peeled and minced, however, I do not like mincing garlic, I am over it. So you can use a garlic press and that is just as good. As long as it's fresh garlic, it's great. Once you add the garlic, just make sure it doesn't burn. That is so important. Burnt garlic will taste bitter and acrid. That is an excellent amount of garlic and yes, you could add more if you wanted. For a little heat, I'm adding a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes, but I always add in much more than that and just say it's a quarter teaspoon in case anyone asks why it's so spicy. We're gonna cook this for five minutes, stirring occasionally so things can start softening up. In case you're wondering, like pasta fagiole is, yes, a traditional Italian soup, and it's delicious, but it's changed over time as new ingredients came to Italy. Tomatoes, different kinds of beans from America, it's a hearty soup of beans, vegetables, and pasta, but things change over time. I'll often get comments on traditional dishes and people are totally torn. Some want things to remain exactly true to form, like this is how it should be, basically because my grandmother made it this way. But then if you're in a restaurant, they might do a twist or at people's homes, things just change and it still has the heart of the dish, still has the essence, but it's not exactly the same. Some people aren't cool with that, but I love it. I think that really dishes should change over time and from person to person because every person makes a dish their own. So if you ever see one of my recipes and it has a certain spice profile or maybe there's a vegetable that you don't like, you can still make the dish. Just swap it out for something you do enjoy that would complement things well. And that's the end of my tangent. Mmm, that smells really good. Things have softened slightly and the garlic has started to caramelize, so it's time for a 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes. I'd also like two teaspoons of oregano. One mm, and two. I actually grow oregano in my garden and it is such a pleasure. It loves where we live, so I get giant, giant mounds of it. This is not for my garden, I, it's not dry. <laughs> I do have some oregano drying over there though. I'd also like half a teaspoon of black pepper, more or less. You're really just letting the flavors meld together before we add in more flavors, like one step at a time. It's time to add our stock, six to eight cups of veggie or chicken stock. Either one's gonna work really well and the amount is just based on if you want a soupy soup or more of a stewy soup. I'm using six cups of stock. I can add more later if I feel like it, but I like a thicker soup. And if you really want a thicker, more silky soup, you can keep the bean juice. 
the Aquafaba, quite the rebrand, and the starches in that will silky things up. I just added two bay leaves in, and I'm also gonna add in about a teaspoon of salt. We're gonna add this to start and add more to taste later. So you always start with some salt, but you don't wanna go overboard. I was so spoiled as a child. We had fruit trees all over the backyard and a bay tree. Oh my gosh, so amazing to have fresh bay leaves. They are much better than the dried ones. You can get some good dried bay leaves though, I will say. We're gonna bring this to a boil now, so give it a stir. You can do a dish or two, stir occasionally, and then once it comes to a boil, we're gonna add some more delicious things. My soup's come to a boil, so it's time to give it a taste without burning yourself. A little bit more salt. It's nice to season your soup before you add the pasta, so the pasta really soaks in a lot of flavor. You would never cook pasta in unsalted water, would you? Now it's time to add one cup of pasta, specifically ditalini, but you could use other pastas that you enjoy. Give it a stir, and now we're gonna cook the pasta for maybe about eight minutes to 10 until it's almost tender. We don't want it to get soggy and soft, so al dente is the rule here. As you can see, this soup is beyond easy, especially if you bought the home, like the store-bought mirepoix, it's like there's no prep to do at all. All you have are some cook times. So dump it in, cook, dump it in, cook, dump it in, cook. So that's it. You can do so many other things. You could help your kids with their homework. You could do some online shopping and the soup will be ready in no time. Once the pasta is in though, you do want to give it an occasional stir or it could stick to the bottom of your pot. While my pasta is cooking, I'm going to chop about a quarter cup of parsley up. This will make it look like your soup's a bit green, but it also adds a nice vegetal note. It's kind of subtle, but it really does something. There we go. Ooh, it smells so good. Hmm. Nice and al dente. So I'm going to reduce this to medium low. I'm going to add a 15 ounce can of red beans and a 15 ounce can of cannellini beans. These have been drained and rinsed. We're gonna simmer this for a few minutes just so the beans warm up and all the flavors come together. But first, if you think the soup needs some more salt or pepper or anything else, add it now and let that work in. Never add it at the very end, even though this is almost the very end. Just before serving, stir in your chopped parsley. And just like that, it's ready to enjoy. With a little bit of crusty bread, maybe a glass of wine, this might just be the perfect meal for a cold day. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe, and if you like this video, check out my soup playlist.